Uh, I'm the founder and director. And from the 26th and the 28th of October, we'll be hosting uh, the Ethical Enterprise Conference as an online event. We have asked some of our speakers to give us an overview of what um, to expect at this year's event. And I'm very excited uh, to have here today, Victor Perton, the founder and chief optimism officer at the Center for Optimism. Welcome, Victor. Oh, Susanna, it's always a pleasure um, to speak to you. And you might recall when I interviewed you, it was one of our most evocative and favorite interviews in the Optimism Cafe series. So you're an inspiration. It's a delight to be with you. Thank you. Now, tell us about the Centre for Optimism. So it um, really is the offspring of what was the Australian Leadership Project. So I had um, worked in, um, well, I've worked in government, in politics for, for decades, and then I had the opportunity to be Commissioner to the Americas, promoting foreign direct investment into Australia and exports out of Australia in North and South America. And everywhere I went, people had such a positive stereotype of Australians in every area, your area of ethical business, of world governance, of wine and food and um, sports management. And so my work was easy because every time we rang to say we were going to tell the Australian story, the door opened. And then I had a, an even more remarkable experience. I was a senior advisor to Australia's G20 presidency. And that, that super elite level of presidents, prime ministers, finance ministers, central bank governors, it was exactly the same. You know, there was this trust in us as Aussies, even if, for instance, you know, our relationship with the Russians at that point was a bit testy, or more than a bit testy, because they'd shot down a plane um, with many Australians on it. But even then, the relationship was straightforward and plain speaking. So I came back to Australia and I was stunned by the level of negativity at every level, not just about government, everyone makes sort of mean jokes about government, um, but every year, even your space of, of ethical governance and the like is this cynicism and sarcasm that I just didn't get. So I set up the Australian Leadership Project. We interviewed 2,500 people on the qualities of Australian leadership. And I'll summarize it because this isn't a long interview, but it's egalitarianism. You know, we expect our, our leaders to speak to the cleaner with the same voice as they speak to the chairman. Self-effacing humor, we laugh and smile but don't, and take our work seriously. And then thirdly, no bullshit plain speaking. Now, if those are the three qualities of Australian leadership, uh, I look at the list of speakers at, at your conference and they epitomise that, you epitomise that. So I'm still bewildered by why Aussies were so negative. And then my eureka moment came at the Global Integrity Summit in 2017. And it wasn't a uniquely Australian problem. Leadership in the world is actually pretty good. The leadership in Australia, particularly in your space, is very, very good. The problem is the fog of pessimism. Mm -hmm. And that's where the Centre for Optimism was born with the encouragement of Helen Clark, who was then the head of the UNDP, the former Prime Minister of New Zealand, and others like John Hagel. And today, the core of our, our efforts is to ask people, what makes you optimistic and to foster realistic and infectiously optimistic leadership. And we've just come out of the Bendigo Invention and Innovation Festival. They adopted our theme, they adopted our voices of optimism. They expected 250 registrations. It was 5,000. Um, so the secret sauce was add a bit of optimism. Just hearing you speak, I'm feeling so optimistic. <laughs> so, well, yeah. Susanna, I, I, was a bit down, I was a bit down on Saturday because I'd finished the festival and, you know, there's so much energy and the lockdown in Melbourne was making me just yeah. feel a bit bad. Yesterday, we interviewed a guy called George Hall, who is the artist under the Coca-Cola sign at King's Cross. And he has a series of paintings called The Optimist Heart, and this guy, King's Cross, Sydney, is selling in Denver, Phoenix, Seattle. Um, so people need a dose of that optimism. And you, Susanna, with your smile and, and your <laughs> laughter, you foster that feeling in other people every day. 
Thank you. Now, I want to get to the topic you're going to be, uh, you know, you've got a, a panel, you're sitting on a panel of some amazing people. Uh, and the topic is called a better normal, purposeful, purposeful optimism, ethical and sustainable business, leadership and community. It's a long topic. But why is this topic so important in reshaping the impact economy? It, it, it is a stew of everything that the impact economy <laughs> needs. Uh, when I talk about that fog, fog of pessimism, the problem is that the impact economy, the participants in the impact economy, have got to get their message through a media filter that is now so orientated to the pessimistic, um, so orientated to bad news, that, that the wonderful things that are happening in your space um, is often not heard. The other day we did a wonderful interview with Greening Australia and what they're doing, but you know you don't hear that message in the bleakness on climate and the like. So, so there are very special people in this panel. My chairman Rob Masters, um, who in fact started the the concept of the better normal coming out of COVID, and um, so this notion people don't want to go back to normal, right? They have grown out of this crisis. People don't trust a new normal. It's almost sort of Orwellian, isn't it? You know, the new normal. But when we surveyed 2,500 people around the world, 68% of them could articulate a better life for themselves and their family and their workmates coming out of COVID. And then funnily enough, News Limited, you know, the, the papers owned by Murdoch in Australia, um, did it adopted our question and surveyed their readers, they actually got 80%. Now, the difference is probably, you know, they didn't ask people to articulate it. But this this notion of the better normal, and that's what your conference epitomizes. You know, how does ethical business look even better? And then, of course, there's my friend Sue Barrett, you know, and you know, <laughs> the Centre for Optimism is on, you know, realistic and infectious optimism you know, our chairman, Rob, on, on the better normal, which has resonated, and Sue in parallel for the last 20 years, and we went to university together, <laughs> um, has been studying and researching this notion of, of practical, pragmatic optimism. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I took my um, sessions to uh, prisons, and, um, and then, you know, Sue and I were asked, you know, to co-host a session for prison managers, you know, how can they lead their prisoners and their staff in a more optimistic, more upbeat way? So it's a long mouthful of a topic. But when I think of Rob Masters, you know, the maestro of crisis communications, but he says the way through crisis communications is positive communication. And my friend Sue Barrett and her wonderful, wonderful take um, on optimism applied to business um, I think it promises to be really, really good. Thank you. Now, the theme this year is all about rethinking, resetting, rebooting. Any words of wisdom before you go for the audience? So it's so a reset, reboot. Look, the world is yearning for a better normal. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's me who's normally upbeat all the time. You know, Friday night, I hit the wall. I'd had enough of COVID. I'd had enough of not traveling 5Ks. You know, I had enough of one person going to the shop. Um, we're all in this together. It doesn't matter whether you're in Paris, London, or Denver. We're all being driven a bit nuts by this. So come and fill your well of optimism come and help build a better normal um, and Sue and Rob and I with Susanna are hoping to give you some useful tools to help create that better normal for you, your family and that purpose community around you. Ethical business needs a big dose of optimism and we're here to help provide it to you. Oh, thank you, Victor. It was really wonderful to have you here today. Uh, just to the audience, uh, don't forget to book your tickets. Uh, go to moralfairground.com.au. The full program is there uh, and very accessible tickets uh, for everybody.